looking at the situation in Lebanon today from abroad could seem quite complex. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, asking me to speak about it. Uh, we can go back to the uh, early 1990s uh, for us to understand uh, the reason b behind uh, the current Antifada or uh, uh, popular uprising. Um, in 1991, around 1991, with the end of the Civil War uh, and the uh, rising of um, Hariri, uh, Rafiq Hariri, as the uh, prime minister, uh, neoliberal policies were set as the standard for uh, the Lebanese government in one sense. In another sense, the uh, Ta'if agreement had set the uh, sectarian uh, uh, system as uh, the main uh, basis for political, um, for political life in Lebanon. Uh, since then, privatization, uh, uh, the destruction of workers' unions, uh, the uh, total change of the Lebanese economy into a rentier economy, which is based on one sector, uh, has totally changed the face of, of this country. Basically, we are, we, until now, we are uh, working, our economy is based on uh, uh, the service sector, which means basically tourism, uh, uh, services and, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, services, which is banks mainly, and real estate. Uh, the government has uh, 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 consciously destroyed uh, everything else, including industry, including agriculture, including arts, uh, uh, and, and has linked everything that exists within the state into the uh, political leaders who are called the Zaims. So uh, one way or another, uh, people in Lebanon have been also um, conditioned to see that this is the only way uh, that the system can work and that uh, the system uh, will bring prosperity to people, which has happened uh, to, to a certain, uh, in a certain period uh, because of the uh, uh, Gulf uh, 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 countries' uh, investment in Lebanon. But uh, since around seven years, uh, the let's say the bubble that has the economic bubble that has been created by this uh, by these uh, neoliberal policies, uh, the support of loans from um, the French European countries through Paris one, two, and three con uh, 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 yeah political and economic conferences, which were organized by the Hariri governments, uh, have stopped being. Uh, uh, Productive. Uh, last year, uh, a fourth uh, uh, conference, which is called SED, was organized in France in order for the EU to uh, support not only the Lebanese people, but to support uh, the, the political um, elite in power to stay in power by giving them more loans and indebting uh, the Lebanese uh, uh, people. Uh, the, Based on the said policies, which were, of course, supported by the IMF and the World Bank, uh, more and more austerity measures had to be taken by the state in a place or in, an, uh, in, a, in a period where the country has been going through uh, uh, a poverty wave, uh, uh, unemployment, uh, uh, high, high prices uh, c concerning all kinds of uh, products, specifically because we import everything. So uh, uh, the, w when you talk about uh, a country which, or uh, sorry, a government which is currently suggesting to sell what is left uh, out of its, uh, out of the government's uh, 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 lands to privatize all lands in Lebanon, you understand to which extent the, the, these policies are going. So uh, on the 17th of uh, October last month uh, at night, the uh, Minister of, um, of Communications had uh, launched a, uh, had announced a new law for which all internet uh, related calls would be, uh, uh, would have an additional 6% or would, would have a $6, uh, sorry, $6 per month uh, tax. 
Uh, we're talking about a country which has one of the highest uh, rates or the highest uh, prices ex uh, prices for uh, uh, phone expenses, uh, where the uh, internet calls are currently the only way for the working class and for everyone really to actually connect with one another. So it was not uh, the the um, the let's say uh, uh, you know the fact that it's only six dollars. We're talking about the extent to which people cannot pay anything anymore. And this had caused a certain explosion, specifically at the level of the most disenfranchised working class. I'm talking about disenfranchised because on the on, it was a Thursday. On Thursday, the 17th of October, I came back home to see because I don't have internet on my phone because it's very expensive. So I came back home and saw that there's on TV at around nine, nine in the evening, there was demonstrations all around uh, Beirut uh, and also in other regions in Lebanon. So around 9.30, I went down to the streets to see who's doing this because nobody was organizing it. Nobody was calling it, calling for it. And it was clear that what we call the motorcycle drivers, uh, which are the small motorcycles that the poorest of the poor use to go from one area to the other because also there's no public transport. So uh, these are the people from, you know, uh, the more uh, uh, most disenfranchised uh, uh, neighborhoods in Beirut, uh, which went down to the streets and started shouting, went, uh, went down to the uh, main piazza, the main uh, public area in Beirut, in downtown Beirut, and then started walking all around uh, the city and hasn't stopped since. So uh, this is why uh, we are talking about, this is one of the reasons why we talk about uh, uh, a real uh, uh, low-income uh, proletariat, uh, uh, mostly disenfranchised people's movement. Uh, the ones who have, the, meaning the ones who have started it are the most disenfranchised. So I'm going to continue from where I stopped. Uh, talking about one of the main reasons why we're calling this Antifada is also this disconnection that we saw between the uh, working class, uh, what could be called the lumpen proletaria, and their um, uh, the political leaders, the sectarian political parties to which they belong. This was a, uh, this, the connection that was between these two was a connection of dependency and was a connection of uh, political and economic uh, reliance. Because as a Lebanese citizen, uh, uh, the members of the Lebanese community don't uh, access health, education, uh, all the services needed, uh, 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 employment, etc. They don't access them through their uh, state, through their ministries. Uh, access to basic services happens through the connection and loyalty, uh, loyalty bonds that uh, individuals and communities have to uh, build and uh, sustain with the sectarian politi political leader, uh, which tells us how uh, about how important this connection between the, the disenfranchised and the political uh, elite has been all along these years. And the reason why uh, these disenfranchised people were not able to disconnect from them and to revolt against them, which happened this time actually. We're talking about the South, we're talking about uh, uh, the Jebel, we're talking about most of the regions around Lebanon. So this is the second uh, reason why this is uh, an intifada. Let's say the third reason is because uh, of the um, extent, uh, so the horizontal, let's say, and vertical uh, uh, spread of, of the movements. We're talking about classes. We're talking about uh, working class. We're talking about uh, uh, unemployed, etc. And we're also talking about the different regions, which means not only the central, uh, the center, not only uh, uh, downtown Beirut, not only Beirut, uh, cities outside the center, but also uh, 
uh, towns and villages, etc. And and specifically the towns and villages which have never been politically active before. So this is very important for us. Until, up until now, the extent of, of the Intifada has uh, stuck all of the uh, Lebanese regions. Uh, another important factor is also the how how the different se sectors and sections of the Lebanese communities have moved. I'm talking about uh, women, the incredibly active and radical uh, uh, participation of women in, in, in the upcoming uh, movements around Lebanon. We're not only participating, of course, we're also leading uh, uh, activities, we're also organizing, we're also uh, uh, participating and taking decisions, etc. One of the bad results of this is that the uh, uh, media has been uh, 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 focusing on objectifying, sexualizing, and commodifying women in, the, in this. And also the result of which was the refusal, the vocal refusal of uh, women as individuals and as organizations in this intifada to be sexualized um, by the, by the uh, media. Uh, another participation is that of the workers. Uh, we're talking about a country where the uh, uh, the capitalist elite has destroyed unions since the early 90s. In 23, almost 24 days today, uh, two unions have already been forming, uh, 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 teachers around the universities as well as teachers in schools around Lebanon have been forming uh, pseudo unions or groups of different forms to act and to organize. Another surprise is also the students. We have been organizing in, as Communist Party in the um, uh, in the universities, but specifically in the Lebanese university, and we know how, and, and it's very hard for the Lebanese university uh, students, which are, is the public university, to uh, join such a movement because of the threats they would uh, receive. We're talking about uh, working class students, uh, their connection to the um, to the uh, uh, political powers is very strong because they need education and in the future they will need employment through these uh, through these parties. Yesterday we organized uh, a demonstration around Lebanon, around the different uh, 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 departments of the Lebanese university. And it was uh, incredibly, uh, I mean, the participation was very, um, uh, big, whether we're talking about numbers or we're talking about uh, regions, and uh, so the coverage was was really uh, important. We're also talking about uh, school students, which we are not in any ways allowed to organize, also since almost the 90s, I think. We have, as the Lebanese Communist Party, we have a sector which is supposed to organize within the latest, the last three or two years of the of, of school and colleges. Uh, we we were not allowed to be uh, to organize. So we're talking about uh, uh, students who, who have no prior political training of any sort who have uh, left their schools and organized amongst themselves uh, 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 demonstrations in their own uh, villages and towns and cities for almost three days until today in the most amazing radical demands and slogans and um, uh, uh, you know, political program ever. So we're talking. This is the spread and the form of participation with this with, within this intifada. But to go back to the demands of this intifada until now, uh, also why why how from a Marxist perspective can we see that this is a radical uh, intifada which is linked and, and, and connected to the, to the needs of the working class. We're talking about an, an intifada which from the first day raised political and economic demands, talking about us and them, talking about 
two two classes, two groups, whatever people call, call it, to, talking, speaking against uh, against capital. One of the most used uh, uh, slogans amongst uh, amongst the demonstrators is uh, for the fall of the uh, uh, power of of capital. So we're talking about. And, and this is one of the first times that this happens in such an extent in the um, contemporary or, or modern history of Lebanon. So this is not in the way that the uh, mainstream, let's say, or Western probably media has been covering it, saying that it's only a, a anti-sectarian and a, a secular uh, movement. A sec secularism, uh, uh, all forms of social demands do exist within this. We're talking about student uh, um, uh, rights, we're talking about workers' rights, we're talking about housing, we're talking about uh, women. Of course, all of this is included, but this goes back to an actual political and economic reading of an economic system which disenfranchises people, exploits them, and oppresses them. So this is this is the core of the ongoing antifada. Definitely several, uh, uh, or, or let's say the, the political, power, political parties in power have had different um, reactions to the ongoing antifada. Uh, we're talking basically about Hezbollah. Definitely most of uh, most of the political powers have been trying to co-opt or destroy the uh, antifada as much as they can. The position of Hezbollah, because I'm talking about Hezbollah now, because for, for our Marxist comrades in many different uh, places, uh, what is known about Hezbollah is that it, this is the resistance. Now that we are in a movement that is internally asking for different uh, uh, dis the destruction and dismantlement of the neoliberal system, of the neo neo neoliberal policies, we need to understand that internally Hezbollah is an integral part of the neoliberal project because they have been in the government for so long and they are supporting up until now the neoliberal policies and uh, austerity measures. So uh, when we see that Hezbollah until now has changed its positions three times. At the beginning, it supported it from outside. And then it said that uh, this Antifada, uh, we are against it. And it is funded by the West and it has uh, embassy interventions. And then last week, it corrected itself and it corrected the course of its position and said that we uh, are backing up from this position. We don't think that this is... Uh, uh, we were wrong. We don't think that this is uh, supported by the embassies. There might be some embassies trying to intervene, but until now, this the, the demands are right, uh, righteous, etc., etc. So we have this change, these changes, which are natural because uh, we think that Hezbollah wants to, you know, support this because the, a, a large majority of its own constituency does support the ongoing Antifada. Specifically, when we talk about uh, movements and. Uh, groups and political uh, parties like the Lebanese Communist Party and other leftist groups which are trusted by uh, uh, by the public in general and by people who don't support an, inter an international or US intervention within Lebanon. Quickly before my time ends, uh, the, w what's going on now is that all over Lebanon, other than the ongoing, uh, the ongoing uh, demonstrations, the other beautiful form of activities that is going on is the political discussions. Uh, in, in, as I said before, in villages, towns, and cities, discussions about the political situation, the economic situation, about the services, the crisis in itself, so the, the different social, uh, economic, and political uh, 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 f facets of this crisis, and how we can uh, um, change the situation. What we are talking about, basically, is an absolutely democratic beautiful grassroots uh, form of discussion that is growing between people, amongst people, amongst intellectuals and people, uh, breaking this division between intellectual, the intellectual and the layman, etc. Uh, talking about women, talking about public spaces, talking about environment. So uh, we think that this is a beautiful way of organizing. Uh, another way also of, of um, 
of making this uh, this movement a much more, uh, let's say, uh, a long-term movement is also to organize directly in the regions in which we didn't did not uh, we were not able to organize for many reasons. One of which is that people were uh, the communities were. Uh, let's say they had been conditioned by specifically sectarian and religious forces amongst the uh, among amongst different regions to be afraid of uh let's say, communist or socialist projects or uh, uh, discussions. So now that people are seeing that actually the new liberal system, the, the new liberal policies and capitalist systems, uh, the, the capitalist system are, are not as good as you were talking about, uh, are not as good as we were hearing them say, uh, let's try to listen to what the others, what uh, other alternatives can be pr uh, proposed uh, uh, instead of the, uh, the mainstream, let's say, discourse. So basically, this is what has been happening until now. I hope I have covered, I mean, at least the, the, the basics. Uh, and I'm very much ready to answer any questions or answer maybe another meeting that we could have live uh, in the future. Thank you very much.